Hey guys, what's happening? Alright, so... I had bought... If you saw my previous video, I recapped that present ground down below right there. Um, yeah, it took a long time. It took like five, six hours. So, I don't expect this one to go any faster, this Road Talker 40, but... I gotta recap that one, too. So, I bought these over at Klondike Mike. Cover 146 GTL. That's pretty much what this thing is, the same PC board. So it's actually a really nice radio. Um, and it sounds really good, but I don't have my antenna connected to it right now, but... Um, I think what I might want to do is... I might change it to a white LED. Because I like the... It's so much easier to re see the white LED than it is to see the, 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 the old... In the... Or in the cassette? I can't even pronounce that, but... The old, old style bulbs, you know? Um, so I want to go to like a... Just so much cleaner looking. So I had to demount it, take it apart, and uh, recap it. So I've been kind of putting this off for you know maybe a couple weeks, maybe maybe a month actually. Probably been busy working. I do IT work for a living. If you're wondering, um, I do more like industrial automation IT work for. I don't do like desktop support. More like the back end office business stuff, firewalls, networking, phone systems, communications. Um, all right, so I gotta take this down and open it up, recap it. All right, so here's a close look at the radio. Yeah, this one looks like it's gonna definitely be easier than to uh, do than the uh, President Grant. President Grant is a Japanese-made 858 chassis, and they had a lot of wires going around everywhere on the top, so it was you had to kind of navigate around the wires to get it capped. All right, so look at these big filter caps. So I don't know, like I said, I don't know. I don't see big caps in there, so this might not happen today. So PC833. That's interesting that it's 833AE. Yeah, sometimes it throws me up because these new caps are so much smaller. So this is the equivalent cap. But yeah, it always makes me nervous. I'm thinking these are gigantic caps. Um, same, uh, same specs, so. Alright, yeah, I hate when they use glue, though. So, there's, see that glue? There's tons of glue in there. In this area, that's going to be a headache. You know, ADC, Japan. Some of these pots are a little dirty. I'm going to see if I can get some alcohol, clean those up. See, they're kind of, I did put some deoxid on there a while back. When I first cleaned up the radio. Besides that, it looks super, super clean. Like when I got it, it was pretty dirty, like I had been in a car or a truck or something, I had paint on it or anything, you know? Is that one? I'm not going to touch that. Obviously, I don't want you to touch it if it's hybrid. Okay. Um, I've never heard of the brand of caps, though. YEC. Alright, so. Um, I'm going to desolder the speaker here, that way I don't have to deal with the, the wires. But I noticed that there's, it's not polarity specific, so I'm going to just... Um, I'm going to wrap a circle on it so I know which side the positive is. Alright, so here's a picture of the back side of the board. Yeah, I did it, like I said, I did it clean earlier. There's not a lot of flux up on the board, yeah, so... Um, Yeah, the radio works perfect. I mean, it sounds perfect. It sounds good. So, hopefully there's no capacitor behind here. Um, Alright, so I'm going to have to start in one corner and kind of go that direct or some kind of direction. And like, like on the previous video I made about the President Grant, I'm, I, once I've actually replaced a cap, I leave the leads on it. That way I know which one I've replaced. But I'm hoping, except for the glue, I think this will hopefully will be easier. Not unless I use high melt solder. Um... You know, solder that melts at a higher temperature. Because I do actually have a desolder, a desolder sucking gun. Or a desolder, like a vacuum sucker. Um, but it doesn't get very hot, so I have to, it has to use, like, low melt solder. Alright, so I'm glad they have the positive symbol on the silk screen. Yeah, sometimes, like, after you get tired and you're doing this for hours, it's like, it really actually helps out, you know. Um, then having to look at every single cap to see what direction they're in. So that's the first one. And as I'm, as I'm putting them in, I just throw them in my little cup here. I keep all the caps I took out, so. 
Yeah, it's funny that I remember there was a lot of talk. I, I mean, I knew they I had 10-volt caps on the, on the Grant radio, but I know some of the early Unidens had this issue with these 10... They had some bad bad batch of 10-volt caps or whatever. I'm not sure if this is in the same batch, but... Yeah, so I think all the caps I've seen are 35 and 25 volt in here. No. Um, if you're going to go through the headache of recapping a radio, you should n never use cheap caps. It's such a headache that it's worth spending a couple extra dollars instead of trying to find the cheapest one on Amazon or eBay. Um, you go to Klondike Mike's. That guy has it all set up and organized. But I've actually, in my previous video, I verified that all the caps he actually used were either made in America or Japan. So, made in USA or Japan, that's kind of what you want to stick with. Um, yeah, it just, it's, this just takes too much time. I'm talking four or five hours, you know, to save five dollars, you know, it doesn't make sense. You know, you can really tell the difference between the Japanese-made uh, CBs. I actually have four Japanese-made CBs now. Uh, a couple I haven't introduced on this channel yet. Um, but the PCB bulk quality and the thickness of it and everything about it is way better built. Alright, so this is going a little bit faster than the Grant. Um, so I give it probably three hours into it, and I got two more to go, but I'm missing two caps. So these two right here, that's a one microfarad. I gotta figure out what this one is. Um, so, um, yeah, like I said, there's multiple revisions of this board, so it's hard to know if he just forgot caps or if it's just a different revision. So uh, that's my one microfarad. I gotta figure out what that one is. Alright, so the one's left over from my present Grant, which is also a Cobra 139 XLR. Um, because these were the power supply capacitors, um, but a mobile already doesn't have a onboard AC adapter. Um, so I did find an extra one, but I'm still missing a 2.2. .2. Right, so I'm gonna replace the uh, or cut off the. Uh, so I replaced them all except for that one cap. So I'm gonna cut all the nubs off here. I'm still gonna run it because it was working with, even with the the, uh, the older cap. So um, because I also want to change out this LED too. So. Uh, but my electronic store is not going to be open until probably Tuesday because of the uh, holiday on Monday. Um, yeah, you can just, you, you can, it's funny, as you can tell the, the, the Taiwanese, they just feel so much lighter. They feel like, I mean, everything about them is super light. Like that old school, like Japanese present rat is crazy heavy compared to this thing. So, um, yeah, like the thick steel covers, it's just way more well built. Alright, this is our nerve-wracking part, so I'm going to put the power supply on, turn it on. And this is, a, if you have a capacitor and its re polarity is reversed, it's going to pop right now. I can back up, make sure my glasses are on. Cool. Look for some smoke. Channel 38. Yeah, the light, yeah, there, is there a dimmer on this one? Yeah, I don't think so. But it's just not bright, and I can't, it's hardly hard to see, you know, so. Alright, so I'm going to uh, swap the uh, light out for an LED. Looks like I'm just going to take a couple screws off. Um, not very difficult, but the main thing is, because both these wires are the same color, you need to find the, the polarity of the LED, or find the polarity here. Like an indentcast bulb doesn't really matter uh, what the polarity is, but with an LED, it is it's polarity specific, so. I'm going to use my multimeter probe and figure out which size is positive and which size is negative. I bought this pack of resistors a long time ago. So you can see there's a little resistor in between in series right there. Well, that's actually to step it down from uh, like 12 volt, whatever it is, you know, 13.8 volt to uh, down to, I think it's like 3.3 volt or I can't remember what the voltage rating on the LED is. But yeah, you can see there's multiple colors, like the green wires are green, red, yellow. Alright, so before I put this one, I want to make sure looks good. See how much more clear it is? You can totally see what the, what the meter does. Yeah, it's hard to see with that, that really like dim light. Alright, so last night I ordered some uh, Nitricon caps, the 2.2 for the ones I'm, I was missing. So I can replace that cap, that's the last one I got to replace, in the glue. And then I'm going to test it again, and then uh, I'll do some other cleaning too. Alright, so I got it recapped, I'm going to put it back together. I installed this little ground strap um, because I actually ran a dedicated ground uh, from a, a copper pipe that goes into the ground. Um, copper water pipe. 
All right, so I'm actually, I do actually have a frequency counter here and an oscilloscope. I have an RF tap, and that's a dummy that I built in another video. Um, but what I, I mean, I have a, a single tone generator, like an app that does a, like a tone. But I need to get a two tone so I can test the SSB. So I might build one or like a. So I might build one or um, buy one or something. A two tone generator so I can test SSB output on the, on the oscilloscope. See like the, the AM waveform. All right, so I can at least probably test the, the single, you know, the uh, AM non SSB. So let me put the, uh, I gotta saw the speaker back on. All right, so I'm gonna let the equipment warm up for about 20 minutes. Um, I'll come back, but I mean, looking good, I like that. That white light looks so much better. You can actually see the meter with the white light. Um, All right, so I'm gonna do a frequency test. I should go be going five digits behind 27. Doesn't pick up as fast, but it goes. But take a look at this thing too. Um, this is so rare, you don't even see them. I got this actually with that base station radio. It's amplified noise canceling mic, Sears mic. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know what they're worth because I haven't seen one on eBay. So, um, all right, let's do a test here real quick. So we're in channel 20 and pick that up. Going into my dummy load. So, 27, it's supposed to be 27, 205, um, 248, so that's pretty close. I mean, if I wanted to go crazy, I could adjust it a little bit more, but actually, like I said, I'm still learning how to do all this stuff, so I said my background is not radio repair. So, all right, let's try that again. Yeah, the more digits you have, the, the, the slower it actually picks up the, the signal. You have to wait. Like I said, if I only wanted to go like three digits, right? Or I could go, I could pick it up really fast. See right there? But if I want to see more depth, I have to bring this up a little bit. See? 2048. So. I guess I'm happy with that. I mean, I guess, like I said, I could tweak it a little bit. All right, look at the waveform. I actually do have a stock the stock mic that came with this, but um, since this thing doesn't actually have a mic gain switch, it'd be nice to actually have this extra amplified mic if I wanted to use it. Um, all right, let's hook up to the oscilloscope and see what happens. All right. All right, getting some modulation there. Um, yes, I need a dual tone to test SSB. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm still learning this stuff, so if I'm not saying stuff right, it's, it's I'm not a radio guy. Um, just some guy playing around in his garage. Alright, um, one thing I check this out, one thing I noticed though is that uh, I turned the mic gain all the way up. Well, in SSB mode, I'd get some issues for a second. Could this because I'm on the dummy load? I'm not sure. Go back to the other side again. See that? I think this mic needs to be cleaned out. Because I'm getting some odd, odd behaviors with this mic. When I have it turned all the way up. Audio, 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 audio. So I turn it down. One, two, one, two, one, two. Seems to get better. One, two, it's probably over modulating. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay. One, two, one, two. I'm gonna, actually, I'm going to a demo mode. One, two, one, two. One two one two one two. See, turn back up. Get the odd stuff. Um. Actually, thinking about it, I should probably look over here. Oh my voltage meter. <laughs> Problem. One two one two one two. Okay, voltage is fine. One. Okay, yeah. Look at that. So take a look. So when you see that flutter, one two one two. Look at the look at look at the, look at the voltage all the way over there. One, two, one, two, one, two. Well, it went down to like 10 or 11 for a second. All right. Let's see if I get that in AM. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. I don't get that in AM. So, one, two, one, two. So, seems like a single sideband. One, two, one, two, one, two. 
which is kind of odd. That's maybe. I mean, I could. It could be the mic. Like I said, maybe it just doesn't like the mic game. I, don't know, I mean, like I said, this thing is probably 50 years old. So 40, 40 years old. So let me open this up and clean those pots out. Pots and the trigger, and the button. But yeah, I've never seen one of these before. I, you can't even get any information. If you type in the bottle number, you don't even get the information on it. That's how rare this thing is. Um, yeah, I, I don't even see a picture. I don't think of online of this thing anywhere. So, all right, cool. Recapped it. So, all right, put it back in my uh, little mount there and uh, got to finish up my Stardust antenna down there. And uh, all right, cool. Having fun. So, if you're new to my channel. Um, I make 3D printer videos too, so I gotta get back on these things. I'm doing some tests on these things. Ultra high speed tests, so um, I'm gonna be getting back to that. But, alright, cool radio. Yeah, I'm always on the hunt now for like uh, these old classic SSP radios. Alright, cool.